Welcome back to the lab. Monday 5, New Zealand lockdown, COVID-19. See what I did there? Monday, Monday, day 5. Abbreviate, Monday 5. Anyway, never mind, I'll stop babbling. So, we got as far as... I'm going to swap the camera over in a second so it's not messy for you. We got as far as getting that fitting onto there and some mounts onto this radiator. We need to deal with the other side over here. Rightio, so if you're watching Facebook Live this morning, you would have seen I had thoughts about potentially using the original intercooler pump out of the Nissan March race car. Looked into that because of its size, etc. It's actually not going to be a problem anyway. We do have plenty of room for this pump in this fitting here, in this situation rather. So that's okay. I don't think that's an issue at all. We've got a slightly different size fitting on here compared to there, but that's no issue because we can chop off and change them to whatever we want anyway. So I'll lop that off and I'll put a bigger size pipe on there. It's actually, you can see I can barely fit my finger in the end of there. I would say guessing 10 millimeter hole in that. Quite a lot bigger in that one. I'd say that's probably more like 18 or something like that, or 15 at least. So that's going to restrict the flow significantly compared to what can come out of the pump. Chop that off with that piece of um, hose joiner straight onto there and um, put the mount onto this, this pump and onto here. And actually, just thinking about it, that'll be enough to stabilise the top of the radiator to stop it moving like that. It can be supported basically by the pump mounted to there that would um, do away with the need for something at the top there that's quite handy now as far as the other end of that the inlet end I was kind of hoping I'd be able to chop this piece here off the bead or the rib or whatever you want to call it run a 20 by 1.5 die nut down there because it happens to be 20 millimeters and then machine our aluminium weld on fitting machine that so it fits nicely onto the chamfer at the end of the pump there and run a 20 by 1.5 tap down here the problem is i don't have a 20 by 1.5 tap so i can't do that right now however we can set everything up so that pumps in situ ready to go even put the thread on that so we will be good and i think at the moment given how long we could be in lockdown i'm probably going to press ahead and do that Right, so there we go. That was pretty easy. Like I say, I just removed the fitting that was on there, made a new fitting up, put that on. That hose now same size, both sides. 17 point, yeah, 17.5 millimeter hole through the center of a 20 millimeter diameter bar. Give us relatively thin wall tube, big bore flow, so to speak. So anyway, the next thing to do was to get the bracket for this pump. Uh, the, the original installation in the Sylvia had a bracket for that. It was pretty manky looking. I just took it all off and chucked it in the box to deal with it later on. And that was, that was fine. So here's the bracket here. As you can see, um, she looks a bit munty. Like, um, not terribly happy. And I thought... Hang on, this feels quite light for a steel bracket. It's got to be steel, right? Because that's kind of rusty, that nut that's on there. And um, it's not a steel bracket, but it is a steel nut. So congrats to that guy. You've welded a steel nut to an aluminium bracket. That's pretty awesome. Uh, not sure if it's recoverable or not, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, there's probably a way around it. I'll chop off those two ears at about the base of the hole that's smack bang in the middle of the screen there. And the same with that one there. I'll chop them off and uh, weld a new piece across the bottom. And we can, we can save that. We can still use that. Like I say, we're not getting another one right now. The rest of it's actually it's good condition. It's just unfortunately, he's, obviously the guy hasn't realised. Assumed it was steel and went to do that and probably realised afterwards. And by then it's too late. All right, stage one. Some horrendous welding there. Don't worry, 
wasn't um, worried about making it pretty just build it all up so we've got some material in the areas we want it now we've got to chop off all the bits we don't want there we go I wouldn't say it's brand new but certainly very usable given it's not something I've just do a couple of scratches I put some vivid on there in the right light you can't see it in the wrong light you can given it's not something that's actually going to be in your face it'll be absolutely fine so I would call that repaired in yeah, my creaky knees horrid eh so that goes into there like that looks like it runs past the edge of there so we will need some sort of a tab welded onto this panel and behind here to attach this but that's absolutely fine or you just run a slightly longer hose actually just move the pump that way a little bit across like that that'll be fine I'll do that it's easier now that I've cut that piece of hose never mind good shopping time done so that's pretty good not bad at all as you can see that brackets that's no, still a second hand bracket but it's repaired and not bad by the time that's behind the grill absolutely can't see that anyway so i'm going to call that sweet as that's wicked just had a bit of a bit of a thought a bit of a solution to a couple of problems there's a clue right there right in the middle of the screen i'm thinking we can just have another rubber hose straight up from here a little short fitting build our reservoir to go along here there's heaps of room here i can come up just under the latch there Quite a lot of volume in that general area as you can see we can position our cap very carefully the other end here it actually fits straight through there so if I build that correctly make it so it doesn't hit the bonnet maybe if even if I had to reshape this a little bit perfectly capable of doing that take away this big rectangle and make it a just a round hole instead with the cap protruding through there with a nice even clearance all the way around it would look absolutely fantastic look like the factory put it there all this all needs repainting and tidying up anyway it's all a bit shabby as you can see obviously it's quite a lot of rust in behind the paint and all that sort of carry on so don't be thinking oh yeah it's manky and it's all going to look terrible we're going to tear it all to pieces and sort it all out later on so that's my current thinking i can actually like i say put that tank there and then we can run hose along here bring it down and poke it through the top of this hole which is conveniently big enough for two hoses have the other hose run basically on the top of you can see that one there the short one that's temporarily in there run it along there over the top to the other fitting there at the back which is behind that and you can't see it there it is there so some people will say oh that's higher than the tank it is don't worry the pump will force that through and as long as there's no leaks you won't have fluid coming out of there and f overflowing the tank that'd be absolutely fine um, if it did have an air hole a pinhole leak in it or something like that then yeah you're probably going to end up with that tank overflowing you guys won't be able to see it it's about it's not much i'd say 100 mils at worst 100 mils lower at the high point here than what it is at the high point over there but that'd be fine so that'll be my next plan of attack um i'm running quite late today so not today went shopping that was interesting wearing a dust mask and gloves in the supermarket as were a lot of people so that's a new experience but anyway so i um i touched on this whole subject earlier this morning on facebook live mate absolute hash of it but that's all right it was live we get it we all had a chuckle well, i hope you had a chuckle i don't care if you're laughing at me that's fine that's what it's all about someone wanted to know about um calculating the size of the gear that you need for the intercooler and i explained that yes you can actually do those calculations if you want you can work out basically how much air you're moving through there how much you're compressing it by there's, there's physics calculations to give you the temperature increase based on that i'm not going to run through all the details anyone who really wants to know can google it and look for it themselves otherwise i'm going to give you some numbers and some calcs and then someone's going to argue and stuff that so look it up yourself and it'll be more fun and chew up more of your time so you can work out your volume that's going into here how much you're changing its pressure by 
that will give you a temperature difference. You can know the pounds per hour, it's actually it's probably in kgs per minute is actually with real calculations, but some of you are American, so you would pounds per hour, that's fine. So then you can get your BTUs or your kilojoules of energy and all that sort of carry on. You can work out your your heat transfer coefficient between the air and the radiator material inside there, the intercooler material, which is aluminium. You work out the inefficiency of it. You can then work out the inefficiency of it going into the coolant, and then you can work out how much coolant you have to flow per minute, and then you have to work out how big your radiator is at the front based on a, an assumed amount of airflow and all that sort of carry on. You can see where I'm going with this. You can do it. It's too hard, don't bother. Just get an intercooler that's big big enough for the job. Basically, what you would normally do is you would fit the biggest unit you can in the space that you've got, probably excluding units like the March that... I don't know if you can see it in the distance. Yeah, you can see it in this. It looks real dirty from here, actually, because these windows are dirty. Because uh, there's a lot of room in that, and so then it comes down to cost, you know? How much do you want to spend on the intercooler? You could put a huge intercooler in there. Um, or not. It just depends how much money you want to spend. So basically, if you've got an engine like this one, we're, we're assuming this is, sorry, I just bumped the camera. We're assuming this is like 500, maybe 600 horsepower, something like that. So if this had heaps of room and you weren't putting an intercooler in between the supercharger and the motor, you'd get an intercooler that was capable of, say, 700 or 800, something like that. If you've got lots of money, just get the biggest thing you can fit in your engine bay. That's the best way to do it. And then same deal at the front, biggest radiator you can get in there. There are special radiators for water-to-air intercoolers. There are proper, specially designed radiators available through places like PWR. They have a completely different tube and fin system to deal with the lower temperatures. We're talking um, the temperature in your coolant system could be something like, say, 30 to 60 if it was getting really hot degrees whereas the air that's flowing through there might only be it might be 20 to 30 somewhere around there in New Zealand so you'll see there's there's a less difference in temperature so it's harder to get the heat out of this than what it is for a normal radiator system where this stuff here is going to be say 75 to maybe 95 depending on the car even hotter so there's a greater difference so it's easier to get rid of the heat so pwr have designed specific radiators for this purpose the low temperature radiators and they're a lot different to normal ones so that should hopefully i guess that hopes uh, helps i hope it helps um you can use logging let's go over to the whiteboard this is where it all went pear-shaped on facebook live because my pen ran out and then i was having trouble keeping the board clean because i used a rag that was contaminated and it was a mess so we've got time to edit this so this should be right you can use logging especially with a link g4 plus or a link g4x and this is time and this is your inlet it's hard, still hard writing through the screen, which is delayed. Inlet air temperature. Ideally, there'll be a magic number here somewhere where the engine is going to make peak horsepower. If it's too cold, you're not going to atomize the fuel properly and it's going to, it won't be as good. If it's too hot, you get detonation and you don't get as much air in there and all that sort of carry on, you lose power. So there'll be a magic number. I don't know what that magic number is. It depends on your car. The perfect scenario, you're going to have... That the whole time, excuse my wobbly line, ignore the bit where it went crooked. That's going to be the perfect scenario if you've had the most Harry Potter intercooler system in the world. It's just magic. It's perfect. It doesn't have any flaws in it. The reality is what you're going to see is a slight increase in temp every time you have your foot up it, and it should come back down again. If it comes all the way back down, wicked. You've got heaps and heaps of cooling. If it doesn't, then it's not perfect. It's fine, though. You would expect to see inlet air temps might be somewhere around, depending on the car, might be around 25, 35 degrees sitting around idling in the pits and all that sort of carry on. You might expect to see, uh, let's say, 40 degrees out on the track, averaging with peaks and troughs that go 
like this as you're accelerating and decelerating depending on the um, the track you're on if you're seeing a pattern which starts down here and it's climbing like this like we had in the march at one point in time and then kind of stabilizes once you get your water temp way up to like 60 70 degrees and it's easier to get rid of the heat out of the radiator if you're seeing that your system isn't working properly it's not efficient it's probably to do with water flow you need more coolant flowing through your system usually usually it's not the radiator in the front but as i've said you need the bigger radiator to get the best out of everything and you want to talk to the likes of pwr to get the system working the best it possibly can do so we found with the march we had cheap chinese intercooler we had the core like this and all the fins all running this way the water comes in through a tank in the side here and it flows along through those fins all the air comes from over here by us by the camera passes through the whiteboard and out the other side and into the engine and that's how the cooling was working we found inside this end tank in the core was a boss that they'd cast in there to put the AN style fitting in a thread in here the distance between here and here was stuff all it was maybe what i'm showing you that's probably real size that made it a terribly inefficient system what i ended up doing with mine was i cut this whole end of the tank out here and i put a plate across there and i welded an an fitting onto the outside of it so it did away with all of that and that then flows water significantly better and disperses it across all the tubes efficiently and makes the whole system work a lot better we actually didn't put it in the middle because that's again that's a big mistake by the chinese you put it off or taiwanese or whoever made it i don't know where it was made to be honest you put it off to one side like that there's your fitting with your threads on it and all that so the water comes in here has to disperse across the whole core evenly at the other end you put the fitting at the other side same as what you do as a radiator you know you want to actually try and get the water flowing right across the whole core rather than just taking the shortest path if i put this fitting here then you would just get water flow through there and none down here so this part of the core would get hot and that part of the core would be cold so the air would just be warm warmish you want to get it all at the right temperature right the way a whole the whole way across so you want even flow to actually get your most efficient cooling Hopefully that's helped our man who wanted to know about that. The um, Just out of interest, the radiator that we put in the front of the march, believe it or not, that core that's in there, that's not a fancy core, that's not a special proper like we should have core, that is actually the original engine cooling radiator that has been um, tipped on its side and it's had itself cut to the right length so it still fits in front of the car you might just be able to see it through there yeah you can see that so it's actually a i think it was like an a31 maxima radiator of all things and it's just been tipped on the side chopped the length then aluminium tanks welded onto it and then aluminium fittings these are all too small these are an10 fittings this actually needs probably an12 fittings to get the correct flow it's something i considered ordering knowing we were going to end up in lockdown and not being able to get any parts i decided against it because i also realized we're going to be in lockdown we're not going to be able to earn a lot of money so i didn't want to spend money on that and then come out the other side of it with a cool race car but no money to eat so there you go all right guys enough talking you're probably bored most of you have probably disappeared by now but if you haven't thanks for watching like share subscribe and we'll keep you posted tomorrow's day six it's going to be tuesday six we're going to call it tuesday six so there you go i'm going to build that tank it's going to be neat fun get that done that'll be um i'll check with the owner make sure he wants that done like that i think it's a pretty good idea we'll just double check with him if he's good i'll go ahead and get it done cool right oh, look why don't you have a look at that before i go there's there's a good end screen for you all righty cheers bye